Hello, my name is Rebecca and I'm with AT for Kids, the Assistive Technology Center at Little Tennessee Valley Educational Cooperative in East Tennessee. And this is a short presentation on Chromebook built-in tools for dyslexia. So when I say built-in tools, what I'm not talking about are extensions. And you have those extensions up in the uh, upper right-hand corner of your address bar. Those are add-ins to your Chrome. These are things that are already built into the operating system. This is particularly important when we're talking about accessibility features being used in schools. IT departments tend to be protective of their networks and getting add-ons, downloads um, can sometimes be problematic. So these are already installed in every Chromebook. So the first thing is you need to enable accessibility features on your Chromebook. So go down to your menu and to get there you're just going to click in the bottom right hand corner where your time is and your menu will pop up. If you don't see that accessibility icon, just go to your settings, which is this little gear icon. Scroll down until you see advanced on the left hand menu and then look for accessibility and click there. All you have to do is toggle this on so that accessibility features are always shown in your menu. So the first thing we're gonna look at is text-to-speech for reading. How does text-to-speech help? It can help with reading a test question or just reading directions. When you're having to research a paper, uh, when you're proofing your own writing, having it read back to you can help you find mistakes that you otherwise wouldn't find. It can also just be used for free reading for pleasure. So in Chromebook, this feature is called Select to Speak. In order to enable this, we're going to go back to our menu, click Accessibility, now that it's there, and just click Select to Speak. Now you can see there's like a little speaker icon down in the Chromebook shelf, and that's how we're going to use it. So since I am in East Tennessee, near the Smoky Mountains, I'm going to use this website as an example. So in order to use it, I'm going to click the icon and then highlight the text that I want read to me. There's going to be a little control panel that pops up so I can fast forward to the next sentence or the next section entirely. So I clicked it and now I'm going to highlight the text. A wondrous diversity of life. Now I can click fast forward to the next sentence. Ridge upon ridge of forest straddles the border between North Carolina and Tennessee in great two black bear cubs nestle with their mother. So then I hit the button to fast forward to the next section entirely, which took me to the picture and it read the alt text of that picture. Um, if I don't like the way the voice sounds, I can change that by going back to my settings. So if I pull up my settings, and I go to Manage Accessibility Features. Then I can go to my Text-to-Speech Voice Settings. And there you can see you can make the voice slower, faster, change the pitch, volume. Also, there's a bunch of voices to choose from and languages. So you can go through and find one that you're more comfortable with. And there's a lot to know about this if you use it frequently. So Google has a support page that gives you lots of different options for using this and a full tutorial. And this link is going to be in our blog post about this. The next feature is the flip side of that, speech to text for writing. So how are people using speech to text? When you need to spell a word, I like the word onomatopoeia. I have no idea how to spell it, but I can say it and it will spell it for me. You can do search for research. You can do short answers. Uh, you can work on a final draft of your paper once you're pretty good at it. You can work on composing. It can help you write faster. Uh, it can help you brainstorm or even with note taking in class. So in Chromebook, we have two options that I'm going to talk about. There is dictation 
and voice type in Google Docs. So the first one is dictation. You can use that anywhere on your Chromebook that you can enter text. So you can use it to search in Google, search in YouTube, um, just to check a spelling of a word. You can type on a Google Doc with it. Um, to get this activated, again, we go to our menu, click Accessibility, and then click Dictation. You can see a little microphone just popped up on my shelf, and that's how we use it. So I accidentally just hit high contrast mode. I didn't mean to do that, but you can see what that looks like. I'm going to go over to this Google Doc so you can see me use dictation. I'm going to click the microphone. It will turn white, and then I can dictate. Hello, I am talking into the microphone, and it is typing what I am saying. I just click to turn it off and it's not typing anymore. However, with dictation, the thing you have to keep in mind is that it only will keep listening to you until you pause for a few seconds and then it just turns off. So um, it can be frustrating if you are working on a Google Doc and you need to be typing for longer. If you're gonna be doing that, it's actually better to use the built-in Google Doc uh, dictation feature. And to use that, you just go to Tools and go to voice typing. The first time you use it, it will ask you for permission to access your mic, that's fine. Uh, you also have options for language. So, you know, even if you're an English speaker, you might be from Australia or Britain, you just click the microphone to speak and it will dictate. New line. Hi, I am dictating my paper, period. Delete last word, exclamation point, new line. As you can see, there are some commands to learn, period. Stop using voice typing. So there is a little bit of a learning curve when you are learning how to dictate. You can just say whatever and just get all of the bulk of the words on the page, but learning all the commands takes some time. Uh, there is a Google support page that has all of the commands on them that you can learn. So you can become quite adept and quite quite quick at dictation if you use it frequently and just start using a few of these commands at a time. Um, but just know there is a little bit of a learning curve with that. So as we accidentally saw before, there are a lot of other built-in tools to explore like the high contrast. There's also magnification, um, your mouse cursor, you can make that different colors, different sizes, and there is a screen reader um, that one also reads the text to you, but it isn't really the best tool when you're looking for text-to-speech for dyslexia or other learning disabilities. It's more for the visually impaired. Once again, my name is Rebecca with AT for Kids. You can find us at at4kids.com, and there is a whole blog post that goes over everything that we went over today in the video. If you have any other questions or want links to any of the resources that I mentioned in the document. Thank you very much.